Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to... What did you call it last night? Last I, ca I called it left, right, left, right. Then or, there was another or one. Or it was BA select start. BA select start. Welcome to BA select start. Yes, uh, welcome to uh, a very flawless series. Yes, this series is as flawless as the very last WWE 2K game to not have any glitches. Huh. I don't remember when that happened. Exactly. Um... Once again, it is the Shant and Dan the Man. We are here. And uh, last time we were talking about just an overall, like from a technical, mechanical, visual representation of how we want WWE 2K20 to be. Um, today's episode, we will kind of continue on that and then we're going to kind of segue into something else, which I think a lot of the older fans of the video game series will very much appreciate. But one question that I failed to ask you, Dan, last time, and I guess I'm taking a survey here. Hey yo, there it is. Um, I failed to ask you last time. In your personal opinion, what is your most hated WWE wrestling video game, and why? Um, I would probably, I would probably say personally, I'd probably say like. 12, I'd say WWE, WWE 12. 12. Okay, why and is that? I because I think kind of what we kind of talked about, which will ultimately come back in, <laughs> in later on in our, our series here, is it was kind of the first, it was the major departure from the original SmackDown, SmackDown versus Raw style. Yeah. And uh, while there were, while the earlier games, the Smack, original SmackDown games, which again we'll talk about more here in a second, right. um, had their own shortcomings. Um, I think that the general formula was fine, and then as they went from SmackDown to SmackDown versus Raw to SmackDown versus EC versus Raw versus EC, you know, yeah, all of that. Um, I think that the the general concept and the general execution got a little bit nicer. Yeah. Um, I I think twelve was the first time that the controls got changed drastically, or like they did a an uncomfortable shift on some of the mechanics. Yeah. And that's what really screwed me up and that's what made me kind of fall off is I was like, guys, the controls in general worked before. Yeah. Why would you change things? Dan. Now? Why? Why would you change the controls? Um, but, uh, no, I'd say 12 was probably mine. What about 12. you? Um, well, firstly, I never owned 12 just because when it went to PS3, didn't couldn't afford a PS3 so it didn't, didn't, ever, didn't ever play it. Um, for me personally, uh, I would have to say, like, I think you you have the the worst luck if you are trying to produce a wrestling video game which precedes a really great wrestling video mm -hmm. game. So there's roughly two examples, but one sticks out like a sore thumb more than the other. Um, I was gonna say SmackDown vs. Raw 2007. Mm -hmm. I thought that 06 was a great success, and I spent a lot of time on it. I thought 07 once again there was the changing of the controller scheme, and I'm like. Why wouldn't you just leave it from before? It I feel like the thumbsticks just made it more complicated. Yeah. But that was okay. When I think about WWE 2K15, that's the one to me where I'm like, yeah. it was a major step down. I usually spend a lot of time on video games. That was a, a video game where I, I paid the full 60 bucks, took it home, and I'm like, um... I wish I hadn't. <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, um, so yeah, 2K15, just with a limited roster, the showcase yeah. was, um, it was just a downgraded, it, it felt like a prototype to 2K14, like, yeah. it, like if you were to look at 2K14 in production, like the, the beginning phase, that's what it felt like. Um, but yeah, 2K15 for me was by far one of the worst video game, wrestling video games in the series. Um, now we wanted to elaborate, um, on like a little, like update feature that we would like to see so um following i think 2k17 is when they started doing this when they would have like updates like for example there was this glitch oh we patched it up oh there was this thing that would happen where it would cause like you know uh, a glitch or whatever or to fall through the ring or... <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah um we would patch that up so dan and i were kind of uh talking from a marketing standpoint and uh, this is for all you entrepreneurs who are listening um I was I for a while have thought about introducing like um, I don't even know what you would call this like a, a WWE I guess that's what you would call it, WWE live update feature 
where basically, let's say if it's a WrestleMania or it's a SummerSlam, so essentially when 2K20 comes out, WrestleMania 36 will be the next WrestleMania. Let's say Becky Lynch or Seth Rollins or Roman Reigns get, get like a massive attire overhaul. Um, it would be great if, let's say, they charge you, like, let's say, oh, 99 cents for Roman Reigns' WrestleMania attire, yeah. um, you know, and have an opportunity for you to purchase that. Now, I know a lot of people would say, well, why would you purchase it when you can create it? Yes, you can create it, but let's be honest here. A lot of the times when people create these attires, it looks like it just like it's like it's glued on or like it's just like smeared on and it doesn't really look good. Yeah, as opposed to handcrafted by the people who run, who made the game. Right, having multiple layers where you can change color schemes and all that. Um, Dan, you also said that you saw an idea of, that falls along the line of like that up, live update thing. What yeah, was it? So, so the thing I, w I was drawing attention to, and I, I, I could be, I could be a little mixed up on certain details about this because it's been a minute since I played it. But I have uh, Madden twenty. I don't remember which year. Sixteen. I think it might be Madden sixteen. Twenty two is a. Uh, and uh, the thing that I noticed was that I would log in and at the startup screen it would do like a download of, a, of an update right. to, the, to, the, to the game. Yeah. And um, it's, a small, it's a small detail because it's really just kind of shuffling people. Yeah. But I think the concept behind it is, is similar where right. you do this update and then now all the teams are updated. Yeah. So now you've got, um, for, for example... This is more recent, and this is stretching out from wrestling for one second. Yeah. Um, I when I when I was I went to a baseball game with my dad recently, and he wandered off to go to the restroom or something. And I looked over at a TV uh, in on the concourse, and I saw an ad for ESPN, and they were talking about how Antonio Brown of the Pittsburgh Steelers uh, was going to the Raiders, and I was like, oh, this is. <laughs> Why would Antonio Brown go to the Dan. Steelers? Why would Antonio Brown go to the Steelers? Well, uh, or go to the Raiders. Either way, why would he leave the Steelers? Um, and turns out, it, I I thought they were just screwing around, but no, it was legitimate. But like in that example, then uh, the Madden game would update to have him be and a go to the, on okay. the Raiders. Yeah. Um, and like I said, that one's more of like a detail shuffling thing yeah. where it's just relocating him in the coding. Right. As opposed to introducing new outfits. Right. Um, and you could make it, like you said, a, a, a purchase thing. Or you could just make it a, uh, like a sort of the content DLC packs. Right, yeah. Where it's peppering it into the into the game. And it's like, yeah. oh, new moveset. Oh, new outfits. Because yeah. I don't... I don't no, I haven't designed a, a video game myself, but I don't know how difficult it really is to just take existing elements that are in the game, or even to through a, a software to download, um, up uh, add them in in order to um, put these new costumes in right. the game. So you could just do it as sort of a fan service thing, yeah. or to make it a, a money grab. Uh, you make it a small thing. I don't know that I would, as a consumer myself, ever spend 99 cents on one outfit for a wrestler. So I might dial it down a little bit, like maybe, I don't know, quarter per outfit, 50 cents an outfit. Because if you add that up, like, what, what's the breakdown here? 400 people spend a quarter on the on one outfit yeah i mean i think that's a hundred dollars right and you're I, I guarantee you're having more than 400 people buy these games but eh, there might be people who will spend a dollar yeah. um i just don't know that you need need to make it a, a pay to get thing necessarily but right it's up to the up to the manufacturer yeah how they would want to approach that but i think that carries over with outfits with um Moves. Moves. <laughs> or even entrances. Yeah. Yeah. If somebody's music updates, like EO. There you go. Beautiful. Uh, EO Shirai uh, just turned heel down in NXT, and she has a, a modified theme song. And costume. And costume. Or <clears throat> you've got Bray and the Fiend at this point, where the the, the new theme is a it's modified a version yeah. by, I guess, Code Orange, who uh, I don't know anything about them, but... Code Orange uh, made this uh, version of his theme song, and it's like a metal, like a grunge metal yeah. type of cover of the original 
um, Bayou sounding song. Yes. Um, I dig it. I do too. It's yes. cool. Yes. Yes. But then you, you, but then you can just throw that in there, and then people can utilize yeah. that. But I I think they've sort of semi experimented with that because I remember a few years ago. They actually, so I think uh, Tatanka and Eddie Guerrero and a few others were going to be DLC that year for that game. I think this was like 2K17. Yeah. And they accidentally put an Eddie Guerrero and Tatanka's attire into the game. So it was like, you can like take that, grab it, and put it on like your created um, superstar. Yeah. And then when they realized it, they took it out. Yeah. So that element does exist of like, oh, they can put in new attires for you to use. But it's just a matter of if they will go through with the whole scheme of like, WWE live update, you know, pay this much and get this attire or whatever. Now, what I what I will counteract with real quick is the fact that, and that's not counter, countering anything, but you said that they they took it out of the game because it wasn't supposed to be there. It wasn't supposed to be, yeah. In my mind, if something is already in the game, it's a dick move to take it out of the game. <laughs> And now mine's coming from if you, I think you you've played SuperCard, right? I have not. I thought no. you played it briefly. Maybe that's somebody yeah. else. Uh, WWE SuperCard, the mobile game. When the shit hit the fan <laughs> regarding Hulk Hogan being a little racist. Um, oh, they took that. <laughs> they removed. They removed every version of Hulk Hogan in, uh, from the game. How many was there? Uh, they had just rolled a couple out recently, and I but I think it was like ten. Ten different incarnation, and that's like across all of the tiers. Yeah. But they took them out of the game, meaning if you already had them, you no longer had those cards. They took them from people. Um, and I think that's a dick move, unless you're gonna say, "Okay, well, sorry, here's a replacement thing." But uh, no, when what what does it hurt that that Eddie Guerrero and Tatanka outfit was in the goddamn game? Leave it there. I'm just saying. Um. <laughs> But yeah, so live updates would be cool. Um, being able to, because the thing is, for and and I've I've never really been a huge fan of the every year release for these games because a lot of times, not a ton changes. Right. I would rather it be like a, a I always get these wrong, but I, like a biannual thing, or what if the correct term is for every two years, and then you spend two years doing focusing on one game, and updating that as it goes. Yeah. Because it just seems easier. It seems like less work for them. For them, yes. Because then they don't have to. They don't. They can allocate a team to then spend two years developing the new one while they have another team improving and fine tuning this one and putting out new content. And it's fine. And you can do more. Like I would be more inclined to do DLC purchases on on these wrestling games if it was every two years a new game was coming out because yeah. then it's something to tide you over oh shit yeah and you just rolled out that new EO EO skin so you get the new the new attire and the new music I'll pay 99 cents for that uh, if I'm not going to see another game that outdates mine in 8 months so did I just hear 99 cents? <laughs> Nine ninety nine. Nine ninety nine. This is just a reminder that you can catch all your favorite WWE programming only on the WWE Network for a non-negotiable but very reasonable price of only nine ninety nine. Nine ninety nine. It's not ten dollars. Not one hundred dollars. Or one million. You can't just say a thousand dollars or something, and then I jump <laughs> again. Damn, man. Or one million dollars, but not. Nah. I was supposed to say the but. Okay. Not one million dollars. But nine ninety nine. <laughs> We're a mess. Um, we got a patch update that. Two <laughs> K, get on that. Um, <laughs> there's a glitch in the game. The game dialogue. I told you, as flawless as the next WWE game that doesn't have any glitches. Well, you know what? We nailed that one. <laughs> so anyway, um, like I think that's about about it for now regarding that aspect of Did we stuff, want right? to hop into online for a quick second? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we can. Um, I know you and I have played uh, 2K... I forget how we're talking about. 19. Yeah. We played 19 against each other. Yes. Um, and I think it's a mixture of the actual online gameplay and the current set of configurations mm -hmm. where it seems... I don't know. It seems really complicated and difficult to have a fun experience because it was always laggy when yes. you and I would play. Yes. And 
then you've got the specific number of counters and trying to, when you're on the online, try to actually hit it at the right time. There's a weird delay. There's like the a two second delay. So you have to kind of like, if you're going to reverse it, when you would usually reverse it, you got to do it like two seconds earlier now. Yeah. So you have to kind of time that. Now granted, I'm fully on Wi-Fi. I don't know if you're hardwired or if you're on Wi-Fi. So it could be... I'm on Wi-Fi our, It could well. be our fault a little bit because it's carrying, uh, it's carrying everything. But... I it's carrying everything over the airwaves. Yeah. Versus going through a cable. So it, we could be causing ourselves a little bit of stress. Well, like, honestly, but, um I've heard it from a lot of people that since 2K16 or whatever, yeah. that this like it's been a lag fest yeah. every time you play online. Um 13 and 2K14 still had it, but it wasn't as bad. Like there were some matches where it would be very smooth as if you're playing an exhibition match. Yeah last couple of years it's like like sometimes like the reversing is like four seconds behind so you have to time it four seconds before you actually want to reverse it um which is which is just god awful and it yeah. is not a it's not a fun experience at that point because then you're like oh my god i countered that move yeah it becomes a guessing game at that point yeah um and you play more than i do on online I actually and, don't, like, I don't even have a subscription anymore. Well, I mean, when we were playing, I think you yeah. were more frequently online. Yeah, yeah, And so then when I would play you and you were countering everything because you were used to that lagging, yeah. I was like, you son of a bitch. <laughs> so it was frustrating. Yes, um, it was. So yeah, 2K, patch that. Yeah, f find a way to lighten up the resources for the online, at least. Like, I, I, I honestly, I will... I will take responsibility for this. You can put it in the in the little pamphlet on the inside of the book if you want. I would say just like eliminate the crowd noise, basically. So get rid of the crowds uh, and all the background mis. Have every online match just be a goddamn empty arena match, as far as the I. The Rock can. versus Mankind. Because that'll probably li lighten up some of the resources being used by the game and allow it to give to de deliver a more fluid thing. Unless yeah. you can figure out a way to keep all those things. And make the gameplay f more fluid, but yeah, if cut if corners have to be cut, you can put that on me. <laughs> Just a little disclaimer, like on the side of the box. Courtesy of Dan. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. So with all that said, let's shift gears. Um, so Dan, you had the idea that. Go ahead. I'll let you introduce it. Okay. So I figure we'll kind of. Break the, break down the evolution of break it uh, the irony of you saying break it down an evolution in one sentence uh, Triple H uh, break it da breaking down the evolution of the SmackDown to 2K series of games chunk by chunk so yes. basically we will in this episode address SmackDown to Here Comes the Pain before they transitioned into SmackDown vs Raw and the next one will be uh, SmackDown vs Raw the whole saga through to 2011. At which point we'll switch to 12 to 15 and then 16 to 19 because 12 to 15 gives us that crossover of non-2K to 2K um, and then we just see the, the more recent developments of the yeah. games. But, uh, and who knows, maybe maybe after we've done this, maybe after the, because I think we, we talked about uh, we may be doing a special episode when the actual game comes out. Yeah. But maybe we'll follow suit with uh, with. Xavier and up, up, down, down, and we'll do do an episode at some point where we we play something. But who knows? I still have my PS2, so, so uh, <laughs> I don't know if I have any of these games with me though. Oh, I got them. Oh, there we go. Can't play uh, them, but I got them. So let's break this open. Uh, we got SmackDown. SmackDown Two, know your role. SmackDown, just bring it. Shut your mouth, and here comes the pain. Uh, the Rock was your cover model for the first three. Triple A, who was on the fourth one? Was Shut Triple Your Mouth H. was Triple H, Lesnar, Booker T, Jericho, and Angle. Were they all on the cover? They were all. It's all five. I actually liked it. Like, can we just talk up? I'm sorry. If we can be serious for a minute, if we can talk about that for a second. I liked that a lot more than when it just became this year's cover star, AJ Styles. This yeah. year's cover star, Seth Rollins. And it's like. Can we get like a collage, a mixture, a, please give and, us something. And now where 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 that comes in is all the two K games do that. It's formulaic to their their style, which is why they don't right. do it. Yeah. Although I think they're highlighting both Becky and Roman, Roman. this coming year. Yeah. Um, 
Oh, no, it gave it some flair. Um, uh, God damn it. Uh, didn't Just Bring It have a second person on it, too? I thought Just Bring It was The Rock doing this, and I thought there was somebody in the background. Yeah, there's Kurt Angle oh. giving an ankle lock to Spike Dudley. Yeah. And Triple H. Um, um, and then Here Comes the Pain was Brock, Brock Lesnar. And, and there was two. Some other yeah, the it, was, it was collage. It was collage. There was a Tori Wilson. Oh, yep, there's Tori. SmackDown versus I mean we're not into it yet but SmackDown versus Raw 07 was actually a really good collage as well highlighting all the main players at the time yep, um, yep. and you had the, the, the quadrant and I think yes. that's Tori again yep um, so anyway let's start with uh, the original SmackDown games so game the actual gameplay on them wasn't terrible but it also was not great yeah um, the biggest thing and granted I think they were great for the time like I don't, I, I, I don't yeah. think you can look at these games and go, God, those were awful games when they when came they came out. out yes. Um, but when you then go to where we are now, you look at the the very static facial graphics on each wrestler, the very rigid movements, the uh, wrestlers being flattened when they're beaten up too much, and so they're laying on the mat and they just go and kind of flat yeah. like like roadkill. The bad commentary. The, yeah, the bad, very formulaic commentary. Um, they, uh, they, 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 they were fun. They the, just weren't as elaborate as they've become. Right. Um, when I got a PS1, SmackDown 1 was a game that I got, of course. Um, I never tried out the season mode. Just, I don't know why. I just, I, I don't think I even knew what season mode was. Yeah. Um, the creator wrestler suite was, was kind of funny. Like, you would pay, you would put together parts. So you can basically have, like, Deborah's legs and yeah. Paul Bear's body. Um, and then you can have, like, Steve Austin's head. So it's, like, Deborah's legs, Paul Bear's body, and Steve Austin's head. It, it was kind of wonky. Yeah. Um, but I think for the time being, it was more of, like, a, hey, this is funny type of thing. Um, but I will say that, like, massive overhaul from, ironically, SmackDown to SmackDown 2, where I think it's just, like, an eight-month difference but it was a lot more extensive and a lot more dynamic. Yeah, and the early ones, the the entrances uh, didn't have an arena. <laughs> you just walked out in front of the entrance video, right. and then it went black again, and then it did the next person, and right. then the match started. Right. So it was a lot less... Um, yeah. A lot less involved. But then you have the jump from SmackDown 2 to Just Bring It, yeah. which then introduced, like, 3D and, like, the actual thing of, like, having everyone walk to the ring. Yeah. Um... I think that Just Bring It and Shut Your Mouth were like very good experiments for then what became Here Comes the Pain, which I personally think was the funnest game yeah. out of the whole out of that chunk. Um, I will say this though, Shut Your Mouth season mode is probably the funnest because yeah. of just like all the little scenarios that you can run into. Yeah, and the uh, early season modes were, were, were pretty rough. And, yeah. Uh, which which ones what were where you had to like run around backstage in first person to try and get places? Was that in these ones? Or? It was in Just Bring It and um, Shut Your Mouth. Yeah, um, which was a weird a weird dynamic to make us go. <laughs> it was, but I like how you can run into like optional like side and stuff, you could, and you could unlock people by doing stuff. Like I think one could of you them, unlock people? I think there's one one of them you can unlock. I could be wrong. I think you can unlock Michael Cole. Okay. By winning a backstage match somewhere, <laughs> maybe that's just bring it. But there were a couple. There were a couple of weird ones, like where nice you could little get in the matches eggs. in the back, and you'd unlock yeah. the character if you yeah. want. Um, um, which was fun. Yeah, that like that's what I like is like those like uh, it was like because it was in, it was engaging as opposed to the the kind of superficial. Um, Play this match, hit three finishes, put your opponent through two tables, and you unlock. Yeah. So and so, you know. Um, or just buy, or just buying the shit from the store, like we, like we have to in the more recent ones, yeah. where it's rack up points and buy, buy the thing, yeah. As opposed to making it uh, an engaging, uh, playable experience, yeah, to accomplish a goal, right? Yeah. Um, or like the towers, like that's one of the nice things about the towers is I don't the Andre the Giant one. If you win, you get a silly ass uh, big head, the big mode. head mode. Um, I think there there might be some other ones out there too, but um, I could be wrong. Where yeah. you unlock a thing, right? But it gives you a reason to do it, yeah. As opposed to oh well, I get some points because for like me, I on the on 2019 I bought the the 
the Woo Edition again, which gives you the accelerator and the kick. It gives you everything. It gives you everything. Yeah. So I didn't have to earn points for anything because right. it was already unlocked. Yeah. So then what the hell am I supposed to do? Yeah. Um, nothing matters at that point. <laughs> and that's another reason why introducing those little update things where it's like, yeah. here's a new feature, here's the thing. It then makes it worth Replay it for me value. to keep playing. Yes. But anyway, sorry, jumping no, it's back. Right. <laughs> no, honestly, I think that to tie that in for a quick second, I think that like from a marketing point, granted, back in the day, it was simpler. You just, you buy the game. Yeah. No collectible, no nothing. You just buy the game. And it was what it was. Exactly. But I think exactly that's the point to drive home is that you would earn those points in season mode and then you go into that, to that shopping menu and oh, a Steve Austin attire, a Triple H attire. Um, or as opposed to now, and it's that was like a big driving factor back then was just different, different clothing. Yes, because it's like chances are, like if you played, um, I don't know, like a Brock Lesnar, like he was locked in. Yeah. What you got is what you got, no changing. Yeah. Um, as opposed to now, where it's like, oh, you want that new attire? Well, DLC for nine ninety nine, um, which like pisses me off because it's like sometimes and then I'm at like, at that point, do you do you want to pay nine ninety nine for a? pack of downloadable content or you want to pay $9.99 for another month of the WWE Network did I mention how much I love you <laughs> um no yeah like I just like I think that from a marketing standpoint that like some of like the meaning of the game has just been lost yeah like you look at we're, like we're going a little bit more further back like a No Mercy yeah or like a Warzone or a Smackdown where it's like you bought the game and that's it complete there you go no further purchase necessary Correct. and i get it that now you know it's business it's money it's a financial thing like money makes the world go around we get it but it's like if we're buying shit make it reasonable yeah you know um and again that's why i why i'm not against the idea of the the every two years thing instead because then it enables them to do that sort of yeah. thing because because of the fact that the business model has shifted. So with that change, so should the approach. Right. And it just hadn't. Um, to be very honest, sometimes I think about it, I'm like, okay, well, these, like, for example, last year's game, you just, you just got done with that Daniel Bryan showcase. You just got done with the 2K Towers. Yeah. Now you got to spend, again, time thinking about what do we do for this year, yeah. you know? As opposed to if you got two years to think about it, you're you like, okay, guys. actually got... make changes. Exactly. Um, and honestly... We said this last time. Get rid of your showcase mode. Get rid of all that extra shit that no one cares about. Just to improve the overall gameplay. It's that simple. Um, anyway, we're, we're, we're going back. We're, like, really going off <laughs> point here. But, you guys are going to love the next four. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, I mean, no, yeah. Like, personally for you, like, out, out of the five, like, what was your, like, w w which game gave you the most fond memories? What did you like the most out of that? Did you see something that was, like, a, a continuation that just improved as those five games went along? What stood out to you? Like, what, what's your overall opinion about the, the, the first five, essentially? Now, now it's, been, it's been a long time since I, like, got to delve into all of those. Yeah. I think I've got the, I think I do have the PlayStation 2 ones out here in a box. Okay. I don't think I have uh, one or two because okay. those were the original the originals, PlayStation yeah. ones. Uh, but I I, th I want to say from my recollection that I think SmackDown Two uh, was the w ha has the and I think I looked at it, I think it it's the one out of these five with the highest uh, Metacritic rating. Okay. Um, not by not by much, but it was like a ninety, and I think the others were like eighty eighties. Okay. Um, and uh, I just think that that one had, it was a it was a great sequel to the original in terms of progression. Yes, yes. Now I do think that it kept. I think it kept getting better. Yeah. And then once you got to the point where you jumped over to SmackDown versus Raw, and you were able to integrate new features like the GM modes that we've talked about, um, and you could you could, uh, I don't remember when they put in the thing where you could do like your own story. Smackdown versus Raw. Was that O nine eight? I I didn't, I didn't buy O eight or O nine, so that's that's I a little bit was, of a blur. I think it was one, one of those the two where yeah. you can like go in and build your own story, which wasn't something you could do on the early yeah. ones. But it's also because they didn't have the technology or the right. the or the support when those were released yes. to include that sort of stuff. Yes. So I think these five were these five were great when they came out, and even. After they moved forward, there was still a nostalgic value to yes. these ones 
that made it so you could say, oh, well, I'm, I'm playing two, 2007 right now, but you know what? I'm going to give it a break. I'm going to jump back and play a little Just Bring It. And it was fine. It wasn't like um, it wasn't like now where you you're sitting there playing 2019 and you go you know what I'm gonna jump back and play 2012 uh, or uh, <laughs> WWE 12 yeah because there's just not I just don't think there's that same connection between them. I was personally. gonna say the lifespan was longer back then, but it wasn't because they had a yearly release back then too. Yeah, if not shorter. But it seems like these games now, like, even though it's a year, I feel like it's less than that. Now, what I will say about that is that back then, because the initial games were so basic, it didn't take a ton or a right. lot of technological advancement yeah. to make it to where you could then make considerable adjustments right. yeah. or new new developments as opposed to now where if you don't do something noticeable, people are going to go, why the fuck am I buying this game right. again? Yeah. Um, that the I like the GM mode going from here comes the pain over to uh, 2006. I, that was one of the major selling points of that game, if I remember correctly, because it was not something that you were allowed to do in the earlier ones. Also, not something you needed to do because they hadn't done the brand split. Right. But to throw that in, and now you run the show, you book the shows, and there's still even sort of a story to the general manager yeah. mode. Um, that was a really, really cool, engaging new feature to suddenly have. Yeah. Um, but I think from, from in the original five, whenever you had a new match type rolled out into the games, when you ch updated the menu, when you could expand the roster, I, I want to see real quick uh, if you want if you want to talk a little bit. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna see how big the roster was on. Yeah. The Smack you go ahead. Versus the, the other one. I will share a very funny story that ties into what you just said about playing SmackDown versus Raw 07, but then going back to it, just bring it. I literally had something of that variety happen. So, WWE 13 was coming out, and you can, I'm sure you can remember, like, all the hype and the advertisement and the commercials that were being produced. They had the Mike Tyson commercial, they had the Attitude Era commercial, the Steve Austin commercial, Austin 316 edition. So, I get the Austin 316 edition. I, I had just gotten a used PS3, and this was my first WWE game in two years um and i play i started playing 13 and because it was so different from a smackdown versus raw i kind of fell out of it and literally like the third day that wwe 13 was released i went back to playing here comes the pain for like five days straight yeah to the point in my mind where i'm like okay i just spent 60 bucks on the newest wrestling game in the world and i'm not even playing it i'm playing a here comes the pain from years ago um, but then I kind of got used to the controllers with online playing, you know, when you get beat up so many times, you kind of learn like when you're supposed to reverse and when you're not supposed to reverse. But going back to your point, yeah, it's like sometimes when the newest game comes out, you're like, yeah, this is great, but let's go back to like a nostalgic, you know, a game from, you know, yesteryear. So, um, did you have the roster pulled up or, did you um, know? so it looks like any of these photos bring back some nostalgia for you? Oh my god. Um, I think it said 36. Think so this is Smackdown This one. is the first one. There were 36 okay. characters. And it was like some tag teams, most of your big stars, The Rock, Triple H, Stone Cold, The Undertaker. Not an um, alphabetical order, by the way. <laughs> um, but then they jumped to 50 new stars. On, on Smackdown 2? No, let me see. Let me see what... SmackDown Two, uh, SmackDown Two, no, your all roster. Uh, on uh, here comes the here comes the oh pain. here comes the pain. And so okay, you had had an sense. influx of where some of those people weren't around anymore. Right. But so then you've got all the new people, the new people, the in, staples, yeah. and more. So, uh, they so like there's a decently si there's a decent roster jump there. I think it, I I don't really want to count it, but yeah. now we're looking at SmackDown Two. two 15, 20... Yeah, you're probably close to 50 on this one too. So you were able to add at least 15 names to that to the right. second game. Yeah. Back on PlayStation, that was probably a decent a milestone. Feat yes. Because you still had like you probably it was probably again kind of skinning different like the models. Yeah. So it, it um, was really just the same structural build right. with a new thing on top of it. Right. So they, it probably didn't take a, a, a ton, but it probably upped the amount of memory that was being used. Yeah, yeah. So to go just to have that as a change was a big enough a big enough deal back then. Um, 
And then, again, we talked about the shift over from the kind of sh- shitty polygons yeah. <laughs> over to the actual, where you've got the defined features yes, coming yes. in, and they're still angular, yes. but you have a nose that's coming off the face as opposed to flat. Yeah, flat. Um, and then you started to get more muscle tone, you got actual variants, the hair got more detailed, yeah. granted it was still very, like, bouncy Layered, and rigid. yeah. <laughs> um... But then you also, they would add more creative parts. And yeah. so you got to, the, the, that's one of my favorite parts of any wrestling game. First thing I do, and we've talked about this, is I go in, I make a character. Because yeah. you want to have, like, that's part of it. Is you, as a wrestling fan, your dream, regardless of age, body type, uh, gender, is there's always a little part of you that's like, man... I would love to do this yeah, because it's it. something you care about. Yes. And so having that freedom to then make a character, whether yeah, I, can't, I can't remember from SmackDown, but I, I swear to God, my character had the rocks face <laughs> um, in the very, very first one. Yeah. Um, uh, out of curiosity, do you ever create a wrestler, forget about it, then you come back years there and you're like, what the hell was I thinking? Yes. <laughs> um, which, when I when I opened two K, I'm gonna tell you about a couple real quick. Yes, please. When, or not two K. When God damn it. When I opened 2006 to yeah. do my to do my GM campaign. Yeah. Um, I saw all the creative wrestlers that I had on there, and I I had I think I told you this three different versions of the character based on me. It was him, uh, his evil the evil version, and a completely blacked out version like a, like um. So, some of you guys will know this anti Sora from Kingdom Hearts, where he's just black and he's got yellow eyes. Um, I made a guy called Senor Robo, okay. who's gigantic and he's all silver with one with like one red robot eye, and he has giant claws for hands. Okay. Because they had these like big robot claws. Yes, yes, yes. Um, and he's wearing Kane's shirt, like the one with the the straps. Yeah. yeah. Um, I made the Burger King. I believe in that one. <laughs> I think it was that one. Uh, Jesus and Satan are both in there. What? Um, you didn't download any of this. This is all. These are all well, because I don't think you were able to download anything. This was back 06? Then. This was two thousand six. Okay, yeah. But no, these were all like Dan originals <laughs> at the time. And maybe I'll like I'll you can maybe sh- I'll throw it in these. and I'll, I'll yeah I'll try and send you some pictures and you can fucking fucking pepper these up on the video. <laughs> Oh, that would be fun. You made a burger. <laughs> it, he looks good, man. To be fair, I think I did find the recipe for him, okay. the, the the thing, online. Okay. And so I was like, Sh- of course I'm gonna make the Burger King. And so I like was sitting there because they would give you um, the in the earlier games when they started to give you a little bit more uh, control, they had the sliders. Yes. And you could find the recipes for crea- for creator wrestlers online, yeah. where somebody was like, "Oh, well, I made this guy, and these are the exact numbers." Yeah. And so, as long as you matched those sliders, then your guy would yes. look exactly like him. Right. Um, and that's where I got I got some of these guys, but no, like the 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 Jesus, the Satan is terrifying. It's a little like demon guy with horns and in like a singlet. Right. And he's singlet. and he yeah and he's I swear to God I think I've got him set at like five feet tall. So he's real small. <laughs> Um, if Satan's real, he's gonna be pissed. <laughs> um, but no, the it, it's just fun to to because you can uh, I don't know if it was on that one, but I have made a correct creator wrestler at one point based on my stepfather, uh, who's not he's not ridiculously. It was uh, like I was playing the game and he was sitting back there one day, and I made a character named Two Ton Tony, <laughs> and now my stepfather not like ridiculously heavy. So it's a parody character. Yeah. But this was before they made sure everything was to scale. So the first incarnation of Two Ton Tony, his head goes the width of his shoulders. <laughs> so it's just gigantic. <laughs> and he's uh, in like an American flag uh, tank top and sh- like boxing shorts. Yeah. Uh, with the gr- grappling gloves. And he's got Rey Mysterio's moveset. <laughs> Whenever Mysterio was in the game the first time, that's when I made him. Yeah. And it was just the idea of having this kind of stout, really, really thick dude bouncing around just like Rey Mysterio. Yeah. So that's part of the, the fun of the whole, the whole thing. Right. Um, going back to um, the first five that we were talking about. Yeah, yeah. Um, did you want to break down the, uh, the like, the, the evolution of, like, what each of those games yeah. brought? Yeah, so, so the... the 
I, I pulled it up in the first the first one here um, had it was the first game being made by THQ um, and they the goal of it was to kind of upgrade the speed of the game because you right. had things like the No Mercy game, the uh, WCW Revenge, yeah. those where the pacing of the game was a little slow, a little clunky. Right. Uh, so this this definitely pushed through and got you a little bit quicker of a gameplay experience, right. which I, th that's why I liked these. Um, and then the second one, you saw, again, growth. You yes. saw improvement to the season mode, a few more superstars added in. Bigger creation suite. Bigger creation suite. We hadn't quite gotten, uh, with this one still, to the more realistic entrances, yeah. which is what you <laughs> then see show up in Just Bring It. Right. And so Just Bring It's the first one where you're able to see those legitimate entrances. Uh, you've got uh, more freedom to run around run backstage, backstage yep. and interact with things. Um, and the the thing that caught a lot of flack with this one was the fact that it came out, this one was in 2001. Yeah. And it came out later in the year. So the Evolution, not the Evolution, sorry, the Invasion storyline. Um, I forget what, what month that started. Was that was uh, mid March? Well, like it started in March, then it takes this halt because of WrestleMania, then we come back to it. Yeah, so basically summer time. Uh, yeah. So it didn't get into full force until, honestly, at that, the way that I think games were, were being developed at the time. Yeah. It was kind of too late too for late. them yep. to shoehorn in any right. of these people, which is why you don't see any of those people till the next year. And, then, shut your mouth. Yeah. and if I recall correctly, there's still kind of a disconnect because at that point the evolution, god damn it, at that the point invasions. the invasion storyline um, is over. Yeah, and we've already cut like half those people right. from the roster. They right. just said, "All right, well we're done. You guys can go home," and so they left a bunch of them off. Yeah. And so in this one, you saw, like, the NWO storyline yeah. emerge, where Vince is, I'm gonna, my own creation, blah, blah, blah. Lethal dose of poison. Yeah, and so Hulk Hogan makes makes his appearance in this Kevin one. Nash is in there, X-Pac yeah. is in there. Yeah. yeah. And and this one, again, you see more growth, where the yeah. season mode gets a little bit more involved. Very good season mode, by the way. Yeah. And so you got the better season mode again. Creation Suite moves up. Uh, this one, you start to get like a legitimate soundtrack where you're getting licensed songs in yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. Um, like the Jimi Hendrix theme for Hogan <laughs> yeah. and all that. Um, and then Here Comes the Pain is, they. this is, I think, the first time they really modify the gameplay controls. Right. And it. I think it was a welcome addition at this point to make these changes because up to this point it had been pretty rudimentary. Yeah. Like we were talking about the fact that in the first ones it was like you'd hit circle and your guy would just automatically run and I don't think you really had much it was either up like it was up down left or right there was no yeah. angu angular running really <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. unless you were on the guy that you're yeah. facing. And so it was very rudimentary in that respect where your running was limited. You had, I think I said like, like it was like 20-ish moves or Roughly, something where yeah. it was uh, right square would do one thing, up square, da, 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 four, so four strikes yeah. for the entire move set. Yeah. Um, and then with this one, you got that more advanced growth kind of coming out of it yeah. where you would have four different grapples, and then each of those four grapples would go off to four different Four moves. different moves, yeah. And so then at that point, you've already got 16 moves yeah. just for your grapples, and then you've got running, and you've got off the top rope, and Down all that. Down opponent, yeah. And <clears throat> I think that's when you really got to start to see where this was headed. Right. And again, then you move into the later games where you're seeing new modes, you're seeing even more raw. Like, how many superstars did we have last year? It was a... Uh, for 2K19? Yeah. Because I think... Because you had NXT stars, you had the DLCs, you had a bunch of legends, you had your favorite, the, the duplicate characters. Mm -hmm. um, but, the, no, the fact of the matter is you're coming from here... And I mean, this is a huge jump you, to yeah. say, but... Here comes the pain where you had 50 superstars and that even that was exciting because you're like, oh, some variety. Yeah. And then you get to modern... To, to now where you've yeah. got... 15 to 20 legends yeah your entire Smackdown roster entire Raw roster a couple of duplicate characters now you've got the entirety of NXT not the entirety but you know a lot of yeah them. a huge crop and then you've branched out to now you've got the downloadability so yeah. now even the superstars that can't 
that aren't put into the game by the developer, very talented creation artists out there can make them, and then you can snag those people up too. Yeah. So it's it's th there is a lot of astounding changes that we've seen from those early games yeah. to now. But I, I, I think that what we were talking about is now you've got that nostalgia factor still that to a degree still gives you a certain amount of, of uh, replayability. Yeah. Despite the fact that if you look at story modes in these later the, the later games that we'll talk about versus these, these are more involved, not necessarily higher quality or more, or more engaging. Because back, I don't remember which one it was, but there was one of them, one of these first five, where you could, through the course of the story mode, course of the season mode, um, hook up with, I think, four of the divas. <laughs> really? But, like, each one would take you down a different uh, story, basically. So, like, if you uh -huh. engaged with... Like, if you engaged with... And I could I could be wrong. I, I But I, I remember one of them, and it could be 2006, but I think it was one of these last two. Yeah is like you could engage with Stacy Keebler and you'd go through some some shit and then you could she'd become your manager and then there'd be a weird cut scene where like you guys start making out and go into the shower and then you'd move on from there and you could have her as your manager I think in your matches yeah and then later on you could essentially kick her to the curb and then go for Tori Wilson or I think <laughs> maybe Molly Holly or Ivory, I think, was another option in one of they, them. They have, they have some kind of, of that in Here Comes the Pain, but it was more of a story of, like, do you keep it professional or do you keep it personal? Yeah. Um, and I was all over the goddamn board with that <laughs> stuff. I was like, especially, like, if Stacey Keebler got on the table, I would always uh, I would always God. try to get her to be my valet because I love Stacey Keebler. Who doesn't? Um, one thing... George Clooney. <clears throat> what? How did you let that go? Um... <laughs> Uh, what's so funny is one thing that as you were talking about the roster that that struck that stuck out to me was if you think about it in Smackdown it was there was there's no legends yeah it's all current roster at the time yeah and then it was in here comes the pain where they slowly introduced this idea of like especially back then because he was modern uh, um, American badass undertaker yeah. so you add that but it's like oh guess what we're throwing in a retro undertaker yeah um, was or, Here Comes the Pain the first one where they did the that? The first one where they the did that. Roster? Yep. And there was what? 11? There, there was, there a, there was a few. Many. There wasn't many. And by the way, I don't know, for whatever reason, they didn't have entrance music. I do not know why. Which was, Oh, weren't, yeah. Weren't they all like generics? It was just the WWE logo going across the screen and they would come oh, out yeah, to yeah, silence. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Andre and Ted DiBiase. And... Uh, Andre, Andre wasn't in. It was... Wasn't he? I thought he no, was in no. that. It was Ted DiBiase, Jimmy Snuka, Roddy Piper, the Road Warrior Animal and Hawk, Legend Undertaker... Iron Sheik, Nikolai Volko. Original Kane snuck in on that one too, didn't he? No, I thought you, no. I thought you had retro Kane. You, you, retro you, had, you would have the option of either having him with the mask or without the mask. Oh, um, that's probably what it was. George Steele. Yeah. And I'm up to eight. Um, I feel like I'm forgetting I'm to someone. I'm pull the shit up. So we're getting, um, I was at eight, so... Uh, Oh, this is probably why. Animal, Steel, Hawk, Hillbilly Jim. That was the one. <laughs> Iron Sheik, Snooka, Volkov, Piper, Slaughter, DiBiase, Undertaker, and they're counting Vince? Nah. Like, they're, like, where am I? I'm on the Smack, the SmackdownHotel.com, who I go to for Supercard stuff, too. But, uh... That's who they've got on there. <laughs> Vince is a legend. And then they um, have the non-playable characters uh, of some of the referees. Oh, there you uh, go. Hogan, Warrior. These were, these were, well, these were removed superstars because those three were not in the game. Hulk Hogan, once again, I repeat, you've always had bad timing. Hey, Barney thinks Hogan might have... Because wasn't this on... I feel like this one was released on some weird system too and that might have been where he, he actually oh, really? showed up. But uh... but yeah, this this was the introduction to unlocking legends because before here comes the pain, it was all just current roster. There were no legends. There was nothing. It was just current crop of talent. Um, and it's amazing to think that like from here comes the pain to now, how much of an influence that that's had because anytime when you do a showcase mode, a you know, or like you earn points, you're always at that thing to unlock legends. That's always kind of become like the end game. Um, 
but yeah, here comes the paint introduced it. I thought it was it was fine, like it was a nice touch. Once again, it wasn't a whole lot. It was it was about ten people, yeah. um, but it was a nice addition, like really nice addition. I, don't, I just don't know why you didn't have entrance music. I just yeah, I don't know. It's weird, um, but I do I do like the fact that in these these newer games you've got so many generic like bullshit theme songs yeah. that you can draw from. Yeah. Not not all of them are good. Yeah, but, but some of I, them are. I like that they're in there because some of them are quirky. But uh, I would I would I the we talked about this before. One of the features I would like to ultimately see return is the ability to put your own music in there. Yeah. Um, or if you know we like we talked about, they just make the shit available. Yeah, like either the the either they're just put in there already as what we WWE WWE can't not have the license to these themes yeah. still because they use them. Yeah. <laughs> um, otherwise, I think I think technically on the WWE Network you wouldn't be allowed to play them. Right. So they've still got to have a license that gives them permission to use the ones that are licensed, like Hogan with the Jimmy, Jimmy Hendrix, Hendrix and I, stuff. I know that one. It's kind of been back and forth. There are like some videos where, like, let's say if you like, if if they put out like a, a top ten moments where this happened, and if Hogan is on that list when he was using that entrance, they probably switch. It gets blurred American. out. But then, like two years later, uh, when you let's say if it's the like another video of like top ten Hulk Hogan moments, and he has another match where that was his theme song, it's in there. Yeah. So I feel like it just depends on like at what time these things come out, you get that. I was even thinking, why not have a, a WWE 2K library? Mm -hmm. You go online, you don't like you don't have to have all of them on on the on the game by default. Just go. Let's say if I want D'Lo Brown's theme song, it's there. Download now. It's in the game. Yeah. Um, kind of have like an archive yeah. library. Because um, then that way you can choose with which ones you want or which yeah. ones are relevant as opposed to like a blanket. It's going to take up too much space on the disc, so now yeah. we have enough leeway. Yeah, no blanket downloads. Yeah. Like that would, that would be awesome if they just had had access to everybody. Archive, and you could yeah. say, well, I just made a created superstar of so-and-so and I want that theme. Yeah. That'd be, that'd be cool. 2K, look into that. Probably for next year. But no, they're not. That's too bad. Because that's a good idea. It's too bad that I'm too good. It's too bad that 2K... <laughs> I got another. It should have been me. Um, Are you trying to wrestle the Goldberg? Is that uh, what that is? Uh, <laughs> anyone but Zoom. Oh, man, you guys talked about that this morning, and I, I missed it, so we'll find out. Well, it was kind of short notice. <laughs> and short-lived, but I... Anywho, um, <laughs> so yeah, um, I think that the one thing that I was also going to bring up was that in regards to again, I'm going back to it, but if you kind of pay attention to season mode yeah. from SmackDown one to Here Comes the Pain, that is one thing where it's like okay, as time went on, it progressively got very good. Yeah, SmackDown one was uh, SmackDown two. My God, those loading screens that would come up every two seconds. Like you would skip a match, you get a cutscene, and yeah. if, before you get the cutscene, you get a twenty second loading screen. Yeah, yeah, that was one of the other things that they mentioned on the on the page was that you said which one that was that SmackDown two. Yeah, maybe that might have been the one they talked about. It was either that or just bring it got critiqued for really long load times. Just just bring it like it expanded where now you can go backstage, you can run into the yeah. boiler room and run into someone. So, so there was so it was forgivable. Yeah. <laughs> um. Here comes the pain. It it had everything but no long loading screens. Like yeah. everything was good. Um. And like much more interactive. Like you could be Hogan and you just you you run around like Undertaker's like right there, Triple H is right there, Austin's right there, and it's like there's all these legends that you can talk to. Yeah. And here comes the pain. It kind of toned that back down where there was no longer a free backstage roam, but there was something about that season mode where it just you kept on wanting to play. Yeah. Even though you knew you're gonna run into like the same eight storylines. Yeah. You still wanted to play. Yeah. And I, I just I I don't know what it was about it. I, th I think part of it might have been the simplicity. Maybe. Because... Maybe. N we didn't have to upgrade our superstar. Work. Yeah, it was less less necessary work to be successful. I didn't start off at a 60. You just had to fig You just had to know how to play. Because back then, I think you were able to you were able to do what what they do in other sports games, where you can max out your person, right? Yeah. So you can either have the default person, or you can be at a 99, uh, 99. and just kick the shit out of everybody. Yes. <laughs> um... But yeah, like that's we talked about this last time. That tree, like in two K nineteen again. I know we're jumping ahead. There's like three different trees. Yeah. And like I'm like, 
I don't and they know. Go, and it's not like a straight line. It's the, like you'll go up and then it'll branch off in two directions right. and do that. And then it'll reconvene. And yeah. you're like, why? Dad. Why? Why is this tree such a clusterfuck? Um, but yeah, I just like, it's it's too much. It's too, yeah. they, they focus too much on how you can upgrade as opposed to how can we make this character go through a story. Yeah. Um, just let me set the set. Just let me set the settings of my character, yeah. or ran like. Oh, honestly, if I create, a, if you're gonna limit me in my career mode to a default character, I don't care if you randomly assign me a number as long as it's within a reasonable range. Yeah. Like da 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 da, da and then you hit like a, like even make that just one of the part, one one of the quirky ass little things where you you get to the end and you go and it shows you like a like a twenty sided die kind of thing. On the screen, or like a little spinny. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Price is what right? <laughs> Price is white. <laughs> Price is right. Wheel. Are you campaigning? On the screen. <sighs> Boom, and it stops yeah. at your stats, and then you're like, okay, well, shit. I guess I'm only an 83. But at least if you're 83, you still have a chance. Yeah. <laughs> what I also loved in Here Comes the Pain was that, like, so you could go backstage and you can talk to a Vince McMahon or an Eric Bischoff, and if you stood your ground. Yeah. You would get um, you SP you, points. Yeah. Like, you can get, like, three SP points just by standing your ground. And if you have a good match, you get, like, another two points. So they would give you an opportunity to, like, level up, level yeah. up, level up. Now, by the same token, if you have a bad interaction, you go down. Yeah. But it was much more reasonable back then, you know? Yeah. Um, so, I mean, it's yeah, it just... Wasn't, it wasn't going to take you until the next game came out to level your guy up. Uh, right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no, like, he, he's serious when he says that because you spend a year playing playing the game. Like, I think I told you last time, 2K19 has been out for about 11 months now, and it's just one of those things where it's like you play for a year, and my guy right now is up to, like, a 67. Yeah, which is garbage. And I've completed um, the, the story mode. Yep. I've played, like... And, and you become we talked I ranted about that last time too you become WWE champion in the story at a 67 I guess that and, explains why Jinder Mahal was champion and then what and then what and then you move on to exhibition mode <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah like I, I I think they they're just trying too hard like if, yeah. if, if I'm being serious for a minute they're honestly just trying way too hard yeah I I, I Something I, I'm a strong proponent for in really any industry uh, is quality over quantity. Less is more. Yeah. If you if if you guys were to, <laughs> I'm speaking straight to you, 2K. If you guys did the the two year gap, then you can you get that license, you get that extra time to put out a genuinely good game like. To, to work on the things that didn't work last time. To introduce new things that people are going to like. To beta test this shit before you roll it out so that people can say, I don't really like that. And then you just skip that. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it's like a quality control thing. And I, I, I think that that can sometimes decrease sales. Yeah. Decrease customer satisfaction. You're always gonna have to. You're gonna always gonna have co collection completists, yes. completionists, yes, who go, no, nah, well, I bought the last twelve. I gotta buy the thirteenth one now. But you've got people like me. You got people like me who I bought all the original ones because like there was those developments, and then it got to twelve, and then I started to be real selective. Where now I've got like two or three year gaps in between the games yeah. because I just go, they're probably not gonna change anything enough for yeah, me to care, right? Um, and it's because of that short turnaround time. Right. Um, there's not enough technological developments, there's not enough effort put in to actually make each game stand out from the one before it. And that's the problem. But ironically, talking about the first five, that's exactly what was going that's on. That's exactly what was going on, and that's what made those five so compelling and so interesting and ha had them maintain such a fan base, is because... In that day and age, small, like I said, small changes were big changes. Yeah. But that just doesn't cut it anymore. <laughs> and we'll talk about that more in the other episode. In the other episode, yes. <laughs> so as we close out this episode, any final remarks about the first five or just anything in general that we've talked about today? Um, if, if you have access to those and a PlayStation, uh, go back and play them. Have some fun. Experience the nostalgia because... Um, you'll, 
it's going to be jarring if you are a younger fan of these games and you started in the 2K era uh, to go back and play those. And I, I, I talk about being spoiled by movies myself. <laughs> Where I can't, I struggle. To, my dad loves old, old movies. Yeah. And he's like, "Oh, watch this one," and I turn it on, and I go, "Nope," <laughs> because I just can't deal with the the old production quality and the that simplicity sort of, of it. Yeah. And it's nothing against those movies. They were again, they were great for their time. Yes. And now I'm just spoiled by the the clarity of 4K and yeah. the visual effects and that sort of stuff. Yeah. And that's that might be something that newer fans would run into. But if you've played the games before. Go to a to a game dude, uh, which I know is local to here. I don't know other. Go to a Amazon. Used, go Amazon. to Amazon, a used game shop, eBay, eBay uh, and get your hands on a couple of these and just give them a shot. Because if for no other reason, just have them in your collection. Because fuck it. <laughs> and you know, let's say, let's just say for a second, if you want to take a break from gaming and you want to be able to experience the real WWE action, you can catch all your favorite WWE programming only on the WWE Network for a non-negotiable but very reasonable price of just only nine ninety nine. Oh, what a deal! For just nine ninety nine. <laughs> so there you go, guys. We. Uh, we talked a lot. We talked a lot in this one. Uh, be sure to join us next time as we develop uh, this, what we're calling like a, a sub-series to the road to WWE 2K20. Next time we'll be talking about the SmackDown vs. Raw series, which got a little bit more dynamic. Depending on which one you played, probably I would choose some over the others. Yeah. But um, we'll definitely talk about that and more next time. And remember that you always and forever... Okay, what, what's the slogan here? What? Uh... I mean, I always steal Xavier's. Is that what you were looking but, but, but for? But we got to get something else. Uh, always and forever. Um, uh, thanks for joining us <laughs> <laughs> on BA Select Start.